So starting off, would love to share an update. Uh, where we are with um, kind of the Cosmos SDK. Um, we had a killer month in January. Um, so pulling up our project board, we achieved a lot of different items um, and we're moving ahead on various other ones. So uh, this is probably really hard to see, but I'm just gonna post this so people can get an idea and let me then follow along. So within um, the first month of the year, we did, uh, we completed a lot of the audits. Um, we spun out uh, a couple modules into their own Go mods. Now they haven't been tagged as their final releases as we'd like to integrate the core API that we've been working on into them. And what the core API does, um, Aaron touched on it last call, is uh, it defines a new way of a new module interface for writing modules that um, is really focused on uh, it took a lot of the learnings that like we had over the past years with the existing one that was written in 2019 um, and made modifications and made it simpler. Um, and second of all, it reduces the amount of dependence on Comet and the SDK. So there is a world in the future where uh, a module that does not do validator updates will not depend on the SDK nor on Comet. This helps in the world of modules being their own Go mods, but not having to be updated every time there's a new release of Comet and the SDK. We did a lot of integration testing rewrites. Um, we did a lot of like store refactoring um, and, we did, and we started off the storage working group. Um, the last call was really, um, really, really good. And we have like a path forward. Um, Bez will be working on an ADR to kind of like start defining what has been discussed. Um, and John uh, is working on benchmarking uh, the new IVL node key refactor against real world state. So crypto.com was nice enough to uh, create a snapshot of a couple modules um, and it's like a change set um, file. And so we're running benchmarks against uh, real world data on the no new node key refactor on an update there is there's two actually two node key refactors. Um, there's one that uses path and nonce, and there's one that uses uh, path and version, and the other one uses local nonce and version. And so there's uh, a lot of benchmarking going on there. See which one is more efficient on uh, preliminary benchmarks to show that local nonce and version um, is more efficient. We've also uh, refactored quite a bit of IVL. So the notion of orphans is gone. This will actually help reduce overall the overall state footprint and make pruning more efficient. Um, alongside that, um, in the realm of storage, Proof.com has been hard at work using uh, developing like a version database um, with BlocksDB that we will potentially be using in the storage refactor. Um, as the, uh, the core idea is separating state storage and state commitment. Um, we're still working on finalizing the um, on a uh, Twilight release, so 047. Um, we'll be spinning up a test night today. There, we started a repo and I'll share uh, endpoints for everyone to join. Um, that will be a test net with Cosmos and IPC and the Cosmos SDK. We've been hard at work coordinating with all the other teams and making sure that when we release, um, we have all, um, all the, the three major versions, the three major products um, ready to be released. So it's a smoother update. Um, some really exciting news. Um, I can't remember if I, if I gave them the last uh, call. Um, we have Samuel Textual working with Ledger. So huge shout out to Amari, um, Joe Abbey, and Jim from Agoric. They've done an amazing job pushing Samuel Textual forward. Uh, we are uh, working on uh, getting an external audit. We've contacted auditors and waiting to hear back on timelines. They're also... Uh, the Samuel Textual works with Ledger. And so we've already been, uh, Emory's been in close contact with Ledger over the past couple of months working with them. Zondex has done an amazing job um, updating the Ledger application to support both Amino and uh, Samuel Textual. Uh, Robert, so I've contacted three auditors right now, um, Halborn, Oak Security, and Informal. And so right now we're waiting on quotes. Uh, if you have any recommended auditors that you'd also like us to reach out to, please let me know um, and I'll uh, 
try and reach out to them, or if you have a contact, then we'd love to uh, uh, being be put in contact. Um, we've also uh, previously we've touched on Pubble. Um, Pubble is a tool that we are using. Uh, we are writing to be able to interact with all chains. Um, the team is uh, John Carlo is really pushing ahead on uh, adding transaction support and active transaction support. Uh, Aaron's been landing some PRs um, within the new transaction module um, that will support Sentinel Textual, Sentinel Direct, and Sentinel, uh, I think, auxiliary um, with Amino. Um, they, so we can start using the Hubble to also sign transaction, meaning that you will, you will have to only download one binary to interact with the 90 chains in Cosmos instead of 90 binaries. Um, then uh, the collections and ORM is, work is uh, ongoing, so there's a lot of work going on there. Um, the collect, there's documentation that landed for RM, there's documentation that landed, that's landing for collections. Uh, Birdie's also hard at work uh, trying to simplify the API um, for how to use collections. Um, and we'll be kind of like doing some examples, some POCs to show people what it's like to use either of them. Um, from there, the Matt has taken the um, a good position in terms of uh, diving back into our good old friend Amino. Um, and so he's been diving into Amino quite deeply to write an Amino JSON encoder um, within the Cosmos SDK. And so what this will really enable is, uh, this was the final blocker for moving to Cosmos Proto with Pulsar and the Proto V2 API. There's been a lot of questions when I've mentioned the Proto V2 API to people um, and why haven't we done it sooner or why does it even matter? Um, but what it really enables is this new Proto Reflect API, which enables us to build much more um, in-depth tooling that can use Proto files to do various things instead of having to use either Go Reflection, that is very cumbersome in uh, it, to use with Proto. Um, and so that's kind of been a huge effort. Also, uh, the Proto Go API v2 from Golang. Um, the canonical version is around two times slower than uh, the old version, and I believe around like 15 times slower than go go proto fast. And so we had to, we couldn't pass that burden on to the chains. And so we've, uh, there's also work in the past to develop a proto generator that will be used to uh, make proto encoding and decoding much more efficient. Um, yeah, that's kind of like the the main updates we still have. Uh, so this month we're focusing on a lot of these different items. Um, and if you have any questions on the items that we have worked on or the items that we are working on, um, please ask right now. And then I will be able to like jump over to the roadmap. No questions so far. That's always a good sign. It's either I talk too fast and no one understood, um, or uh, or I did a good job explaining it. So we um, so moving on to the roadmap, um, we added a doc a doc in the repo so people can follow along. Right now, this only includes Q1, but we plan on including Q2, Q3, Q4, and turning it into a blog post. Um, so for Q1, what we have really slated out is uh, produce a spec for the new store design. So this is the storage working group. Um, we want to put store as its own Go, Go module. This has already been completed. Um, this will enable the store working group to work freely and not be limited by SDK releases, potentially even testing on mainnets before um, the final release. Um, the third item is we want to begin the implementation of store v2, which is already beginning. We want to do some research, potentially produce an RFC or an ADR for parallel execution of state and uh, an RFC and ADR for optimistic execution. Um, the, the SAE team has done a lot of research on optimistic execution, so we'll probably be working closely with them on that effort. Um, on the client UX uh, items, we want to achieve V1 query support for auto CLI. We're, um, we're there practically, um, we're done already there. The only thing is documentation and how to best integrate it into the various chains so it can work well with Hubble and other things. Uh, we want to add dynamic metadata support. So the net dynamic metadata support will also um, help the command line, so help uh, Hubble, and also um, provide various requirements of things that need to be added to protofiles so it can be easier. Um, so as we build tooling out, that we can um, rely on this metadata. 
the multi-chain command, this is Hubble. So we've actually um, released the kind of like the query support uh, uh, version. We will be writing a blog post on like how to interact with it, how to use it. And we're working on the transaction support there. We want to, for dev UX, um, there's some stuff we haven't added and we need to like modify. So release collections v1. This also goes hand in hand with uh, releasing ORM v1. Um, Aaron's um, pushing that forward very quickly. We want to migrate three modules to use uh, either collections or ORM. This also has to be like modified. Um, and that the the main thing here is that uh, there is a discussion on how to make ORM like uh, state compatible, so we can um, so there isn't like a large migration needed. Sign mode textual here it says seventy five percent, but it's uh, closer to like ninety five percent. I'd say um, this uh, would will be landing in the next release of the SDK. Um, we couldn't get it into 047 because there were some API breaking changes. Um, so for the core API, the the work we wanted to do is uh, merge the ADR for core API and potentially migrate uh, up to three modules to use core API um, to really kind of get ourselves using it and potentially show people how to how to integrate it themselves. Uh, module dependency, we want to give three modules their own Go mods. I believe we've already actually did like four or five modules here. Um, and now we're working on cleaning up the dependency graph between the modules that were spun out. And this is kind of dependent on the integration testing framework that I'll touch on in the testing section. Um, as a stretch, as some, uh, some stretch items, we wanted to include like MetaMask signing directly into the SDK. So there's been like two or three teams um, that have added their own custom MetaMask signing. Um, recently, I also talked to Osmosis and they also want this. Um, they actually already started working on it. And so we're gonna collaborate with them on it. Uh, ADR 33, internal message routing. Um, this is also, uh, the ADR has been merged and now the work on the internal message router has begun, adding documentation on how to use it and how modules can kind of communicate with each other without having to pass keepers to each other. Um, ADR 54, ADR, ADR 54 is the dependency management across modules. So once we integrate ADR 33, now you have this internal message router, but now modules can't like, um, since you're not passing a keeper and doing the expected keeper design, um, instead you're passing a message to the router that's getting routed to the, to the associated module. There's a dependency uh, management issue that we would like to resolve in the best way possible. Um, you can kind of think of it like when you're building a smart contract, um, how do you interact with another module? You go read that module's code and then like you, they maybe have a library that you can like import that defines that message that you, that, um, you can use to interact with their smart contracts. But what if that smart contract gets updated, all of a sudden you need to update your smart contract where you're not really like notified in time. Um, and so like maybe they update and you need like another two weeks to update. And so you can kind of think of like that dependency management between contracts that they, you don't own um, is the same thing here with like modules you potentially don't own. You need some way to like couple them because uh, they're, they are doing message passing instead of passing keepers. We would like to, um, if you have any questions on any of these items, I'm just gonna like uh, talking really fast right now, um, then definitely just shout. Um, so the next item we wanna remove global back 32. Um, there's, this has been a hot discussion for, uh, for a few years. And I think uh, at one point, a part of the work was completed and had to be rolled back, but this will help teams like the Relayer and um, various tooling libraries. So instead of having a global back 32 that gets passed everywhere or that, um, that is relied, there's like a central place that modules can go to get the back 32 encoding. Um, and this also couples back 32 encoding to potentially the off module or the upcoming account module. So in this sense, like if you want to use base 58 or some sort of other encoding for keys, then you can um, by just switching out the account module. Um, this kind of comes into the next one, the auth module. And this will get something that we will discuss where um, there's been a discussion that uh, it would be nice. There's a lot of features out there that have been people have been adding to the new auth module. Many of the SDK modules are four plus years old and we'd like to like introduce new paradigms and new features like uh, account key rotation, um, but also accounts that are controlled by non private keys. Um, so different types of uh, authentication designs. Um, this is something that is going to be discussed and if you have interest, definitely just shout and we'll um, look at spinning it out into its own working group. Um, touched it on it, touched on it before. We're implementing the amino JSON encoder. Won't go deep there because we've already talked about it. The integration testing framework that ties into the man, uh, management dependency, but 
right now in the Cosmos SDK, if you look at our integration tests and our end to end tests, they're actually not that far apart, which is kind of like meaning that we either have end to end tests or we either have integration tests. Um, the team, I, I would say we have more end to end tests than integration tests. And the question always has become like, what do we do for integration tests? And this is, or for end to end tests. And this is a question that's been asked around the ecosystem for many times because the SDK does it one way, Osmosis does it one way, Strangelove has the interchain test um, library. So it's like, let's let's work on building a canonical one. It's either integrating one of those two for end to end testing, but the integration testing framework is something we'd like to design. So ABCI 2.0. Um, so right now uh, there's, work between the SDK team and the Comet team. We don't have amino JSON encoder. It's um, the amino JSON encoder that is used right now is amino. Um, and so to remove the dependency of amino, but also allow it to work with uh, protobuf, meaning that like you annotate your messages with the, uh, with the amino message name and then the amino JSON encoder, then in this scenario, I believe, um, correct me if I'm wrong, Matt or Aaron, you won't have to register like legacy amino JSON in the codec, in the global codec, because uh, you'll be able to encode and decode messages via this uh, encoder. And the message type will be of that type uh, uh, in, the, in the annotation. It also means that you can use Hubble um, like dynamically with any chain because you, you don't need to have the concrete amino types. You can just download the proto files and then dynamically do amino signing for any chain. All right, so it's basically like a new amino JSON encoder. Yes. Like amino JSON encoder generated from the proto buff. Uh, sorry, can you repeat that? I would say like you want to create a new amino JSON encoder, which will be generated from the protobuf. Yeah, you just need the protobuf file descriptors, and then you can do amino signing. You don't need to do nice. any amino amino registration. Have concrete amino types. You can just just talk to a chain, get its protobuf file descriptors, and then you're good to go. So I assume that's both encoder and decoder. Uh, just encoder. We don't need to do any decoding of amino for, for this, just for the sign mm -hmm. bytes. Well, if someone will use the legacy for uh, the ledger signing, for whatever reason. I mean, yeah, it, it will probably take a while for, even if textual is ready, you know, within the next couple months, it will probably take one to two years before every chain and every app is supporting, you know, sign bytes actual, because it's not just like it's the chain supporting it, it's people updating the ledger apps, it's it's front end apps updating to do the sign mode textual rendering. Yeah, exactly. So wouldn't it make sense to also implement a decoder if it's not that hard? We don't we don't need to decode the amino JSON. There's no it's just used for generating sign bytes that are used in the ledger. That's the only usage um, for amino JSON. Actually, th there's one other small usage of amino, which is in the multi sig pub key, but that's pretty isolated. In not too commonly used. Okay. I mean, if I sign with a ledger, I sign, I mean, I encode with amino JSON, right? So I need to be able to decode that on the, on the chain. No, you don't need to be able to decode it. The, the, the way- Oh, right. Is, yeah. yeah, 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 so yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I, I do like a double, double serialization, one for signing and one for sending. Yes, sweet. Um, perfect. Uh, does anyone else have any questions? Awesome. So with ABCI 2.0, the SDK team and the common team are working together to flush out the ABCI 2.0 um, API and design. Um, there was a call week earlier this week. Um, there's an ADR that's written um, with a few questions on how to best integrate it. Um, the integration of ABCI 2.0 currently is blocked. If Comet um, does release O38 and RC or something like that, we'd love to begin the integration process of this feature. Um, basically for the next release of the SDK, um, we'd like to get it out as soon as possible, first because of signable textual, but also because of ABCI 2.0. These are two features that, um, the ABCI 2.0 is a, a feature that many teams have been asking for for the better half of a year now. Um, on the security, yeah. 
Do you want to give us a 10 second update from Cometside yeah, on this? Go ahead. Where we are. So basically, we're now working on O34. O34 is happening in the next days. Then we need to QA O37. All this needed to be done. It's unplanned work needed to be done because of you know, the rebranding. But after that, basically, uh, our top top priority is going to be ABCA20. And on that, like we are code complete. And all that's left to do there is just as in O34 and O37. It's just the QA process that we have. It might take a bit a bit longer because this one is new, so probably we're gonna find issues. So it's gonna be a, a bit longer than it's taking for O34 and O37, which are are being kind of uneventful. Hopefully, this clarifies the situation on you know on our side. Yes, thank you so much. Um, that was super helpful. Um, so yeah, so um, I guess from from our side, like even if you have like an alpha beta, um, the team there's a few people on the team who are eagerly awaiting to. Um, work on this. So just let us know when you're ready and we'll we'll be ready as well. Um, on the security front, we're working on the circuit breaker module. We're on the tail end of this. Um, Sam from the SDK team has been working hard on this. Uh, it's also part, part of the onboarding process. So she's been doing a really good job. Um, and for the circuit breaker, we'll also be releasing it for 045, 046, and 047. It will be its own standalone module, but you'll be able to pull it into your chain um, with those previous versions. If you need an older version with 044, please come and talk to us um, and we can coordinate a release of the circuit breaker for 044 as well. Um, on the IVL front, um, touched on it earlier in the call, but just we're just gonna merge the ADR01, prepare the migration path for the node key refactor. I'd say here it says the migration path has not been finalized. Um, in the last call, we got uh, really close to finalizing a migration path. Um, and so we're, we're making good headway. And like it would be amazing, and from my understanding, it is possible that we can actually start testing this IBL refactor on mainnets uh, uh, around the ecosystem. So we we may pop on to one of your guys' chains and just start playing around and profiling uh, the new IBL refactor. And so those are the um, the objectives for Q1. Would love to hear if people think we're missing something or. Um, or if they like more clarification on a particular subject. Nada. Okay, sounds good. Um, where are you? Yeah. Team updates, Q1 done. Um, so, um, yeah, so Bez, maybe do you want to, or, or even Sergio, um, do one of you guys want to give kind of like a, Introduction to vote extensions or what ABCI 2.0 is. Um, we the, the feedback needed for on vote extensions. Um, there isn't necessarily feedback needed right now, but it could be good just to give a short tutorial or a short um, 101 on what it enables and what are the possibilities um, when you use it. Um, would Bez, you want to take it away? Might be there, Might be on the train. Um, I think he's not here. Awesome. Uh, I see one question from Romeo. And you want to yeah. go ahead? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Uh, I have one question about the Cosmos uh, replicated security that uh, yeah. what is your team plan for the shared security after the rollout of uh, consumer chain? So uh, the Cosmos SDK team doesn't work on the interchain security, but that is a separate team. Um, and so the so I wouldn't be able to best answer that. Um, I can put you in a chat with the team leading the interchain security and they will be able to give you better answers. Okay, okay. And also the one thing that the, the graph suspend the support of uh, on the Cosmos. So any plan to roll out a powerful index service framework from the Cosmos side? Yeah, um, so there's there's a few already. Um, so teams like Flipside and Numia are like indexing and built their own indexers. Um, we are, are working on merging a PR that uh, we call it state streaming. Um, and what this does is, first of all, it um, it allows you to plug any sort of indexer into the Cosmos SDK and it will send you uh, the begin block, end block, and all the delivered transactions and their events. 
but also will send you the change set between um, the previous uh, the previous version and the new version. And so in this sense, um, there is, uh, I believe there's gonna be three um, indexers in the SDK, but they're quite simple. The idea is the, the indexers will be there and then uh, a, a client can write their own custom indexer to stream out of the SDK. So the, the first one is the file system. So it's gonna write the file system and it's on the consumer end to like read the file system and then delete the files. There's a gRPC one. The gRPC one will just stream all events and state updates to whatever process is listening on the other side. Um, there's an interface that can be implemented. Um, the third one, I'm forgetting what it is. Um, uh, so th those two are top of mind, but there's a third one, I believe as well. Um, and potentially like uh, there's, there's a lot of teams waiting, waiting for this work. Um, and there's, uh, so for on the event indexing, I'd say that is the best solution. Um, the Tendermint indexing, I would say like, my recommendation is like, we should start relying on it less. Um, there's a lot more powerful things we can do from the SDK's perspective um, on the indexing. Um, and like the indexing to Tendermint is still supported. Um, and so uh, you can still use that as well. There, Sergio, Sergio agrees with us there too. Yeah, if I, if I take it, can take the floor for, for 10 seconds. So um, we need to coordinate on this, but basically we we feel, and this agrees with, with what Marco said, we feel that the indexing is not uh, the main duty of a um, replication machine, with, of, of a you know, BFT engine, which is what we are. We are taking steps, not now, not immediately, but in the next weeks, uh, and then probably in Q2, we're taking steps, steps in separating, fully separating all our indexing service from the rest of the of Comet so that people can actually just shut it off directly and um, basically replace it with, with whatever they want to replace it. I hear what Marco said is a similar effort me being made at, at the SDK, but I just wanted to basically relay our, our intentions on that. So we're not planning to improve it. We're not planning to make it like, I don't know, better or whatever. What we're planning to do is separating from the core of, of our business Keeping it off, keeping offering it for whoever is is already depending on it. We don't want to break people, but you know, moving forward, we would like to you know be offering this less and less. So this basically agrees with what you might was saying. Amazing. Does that help answer the question, Rumio? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Of course. Um, any other questions from anyone? So I I would also just add to the indexing story. Um, both the ORM and collections, um, the, the idea is that those can be used for decoding states um, and may include um, built-in support for indexing, certain types of indexing like SQL indexing in the case of the ORM. Um, so hopefully those two like pieces help complete this, the like full end-to-end -end story of how you decode an index state. Yes, um, Ryan asked just a link to um, uh, a link to state streaming. Um, I shared the uh, PR in the chat. This is like the final PR we need um, to um, kind of say that uh, state streaming is 1.0. Um, it can already be used today. There's a version of state streaming. What this ADR um, implements is a Go plugin system using the HashiCorp Go plugin library. Perfect. Um, maybe maybe uh, since Bez dropped off, um, I'm just checking, is, is Ferdy here? I don't know how to check. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm here. Yeah. Maybe, maybe we jump into off discussion um, and we can kind of facilitate that discussion a bit, kind of get, um, there's like two proposals out there right now in the issue. Um, I can open it on my screen since I'm sharing. Um, and then we can kind of like have a discussion um, for if you want to start with your proposal and then Aaron, um, you can also chime in with the proposal you made as well. Yeah, I I would say that uh, Aaron's and mine proposals are similar. Uh, the only thing that probably my proposal expands more a little on like what are the plans like with, with regards to accounts so like with regards to auth, the idea is make basically auth 
a layer which only checks uh, if that transaction can actually be accepted or, 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 or not, and who are the actual signers of the TX. What's, uh, let's say, a sort of like unexplored field is what we plan to actually do with uh, accounts. And what I would like to propose, of course, uh, we will need to like uh, do some 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 ironing on 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 this concept. Is basically to like sort of bring accounts a little closer to like what what modules are, to like sort of bring uh, uh, assert if there are, there is something in common that are accounts and and modules share, and basically how we can maybe. Have like a better design for 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 accounts that allows the dev developers to like extend them in a better way, which does not require always to like uh, go and modify modules in order to like uh, uh, support certain cap capabilities of accounts. Yeah, so that's in short what I am writing here. Aaron, you wanna you wanna go? It does sound like the the proposals are somewhat similar. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think um, you know what I'm understanding is that like uh, Freddie's proposal for accounts maybe gets more into sort of like what are the um, like what are restrictions on what can happen with maybe funds that accounts own, and you know more getting into like kind of um, building out that abstraction. Um, you know what I'm proposing in terms of auth, I think is is pretty. Pretty simple, Mo like mostly that we move out the other stuff from auth that doesn't, that is unrelated to just checking whether something is um, authenticated, um, and that would would be pulling out the transaction stuff and the vesting module stuff. I think that's all pretty much agreed on that that stuff is is distinct, um, and you know th this is something that we've already started to do to some extent. Um, the idea of extending the public key abstraction to um, cover both like module what we were calling module credentials and then actual pub keys. Um, and so that this, you know, what auth basically becomes a mechanism for checking, okay, is something an actual pub key? Can it do signing? Um, and if so, then we can verify the signature. Um, if not, then we reject an external transaction, but we can accept an internal transaction through the um, intermodule router, which is described in uh, ADR 33. So that, um, you know, that's basically what I've, I've been, you know, proposing for auth, it's pretty simple. It, it controls a very small amount of state, and then other, you know, other stuff that's there now is is refactored out. So there, there is um, I, I think that the main difference between um your proposal and Ferdy's proposal from from him from both of you is like, I think Ferdy is proposing like just a, a, a ground up like almost like a new module. It's like auth is there and like we try and like reduce what is an auth. Um, and then like there's like a new module that exists that handles. So it's like, it's less so about dealing with like the cumbersome entertainment of the current auth module. Yeah, it, it, I mean, it, it definitely sounds interesting. I'd be curious to hear more about like what, you know, what would be in this accounts module and what sort of like what ways um, we're envisioning that like the abstraction will be built out to handle their use cases. Yeah, I yeah. would say from 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 this side how the account like how the abstraction is, is going to look like it's a little difficult to write right now to actually flesh it out fully because uh, I, th I think uh, it's gonna be a moving piece for quite some time, especially up until we mi migrate modules to ADR 33. And I think that's when probably uh, we can exploit this sort of new account model better. The idea though is that hypothetically, uh, I should be able, let's say, to like plug in to my Cosm Wasm contract, a pub key, and I should be able to like uh, enhance my 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 accounts with custom logic with with regards to like what what can be done or what or what cannot be done with uh, with uh, accounts like there are different chains doing do, do, doing this 
like Nier, which I think uh, propose probably a better and more extendable model of account. So also the other part here is like um, your the the op two accounts model is kind of like more so dependent on ADR thirty three. Um, Aaron, yours is like ADR thirty three is like I is the credential part of the pubkey interface, which would make it like less reliant on ADR thirty three. Yeah, we say it's orthogonal. It's like it enables ADR33, but like mostly it just sort of cleans up. Like what one big thing that I, I want to clean up is the fact that we have the account is po polymorphic in the SDK now, meaning that there's you can have a base account, you can have a module account, and um, any chain can add in different types of accounts that, uh, or we also have the vesting accounts in the SDK. So like there are different types of accounts that can be implemented that go in the same storage space, but like they all, are supposed to share this base account, but like if you were, for instance, if you were a client and you just get an account, it's hard to like get the basic simple stuff of like what is the um, the sequence number, what is the pub key, because it could be some random account type implemented by some chain that renames the fields to something different, um, and there's no need to store all that information under like like just just this storage location where you you should just have the pub key, the address, and the sequence. Um, like it's just overcomplicated. We don't have we don't have a need for accounts like polymorphic really. Like, and I, that's yeah. like one of the main yeah. just like tech debt things I want to clean up because it's I don't know. It's been there for a long time. Yeah, definitely, um, definitely concur with that. This has come up quite recently in the past like couple months. Um, I believe if someone from Agoric is here, they they I believe they brought them up. They brought this issue up as well. Not sure if they're on the call. I guess not. Um, but yeah, okay. So from these like two discussions, um, is there interest from anyone on the call to participate in these discussions, listen along, potentially propose some designs? Um, it's unfortunate no one from Agoric is here because I believe um, they would like to participate, but we can open a Slack channel. Um, but yeah, the, the floor is open to anyone now if they want to discuss about anything. Okay. Then, then I think for now we can, we'll follow up with the GORG and then we can kind of start a smaller working group. And then if people want to join in later on, then they can. Um, so on the vote extensions front, Sergio, would you want to do like a small synopsis on the feature or, or should I? I can improvise something. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So yeah, let me just explain from the comment level what vote extensions are and um, maybe I can give a hint of the use cases. Although the, for, for the use cases, the expert people are, are basically, uh, well, the SDK team and anybody that is Developing applications, and in, in you know, in that sense, you guys are way more logical than I am. So, <clears throat> so what extensions are um, um, basically for the apps? What they mean is um, two new uh, methods in ABCI called extend vote and verify vote extension, and it also means uh, an extension of like an um, uh, a change in the prepare proposal, which is already available for will also already be available in 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 O thirty seven, so one one release before where basically the vote extension data that has been collected, and I'm gonna explain in a minute, is made available to the application, okay? So that they can do something, something special with the vote extension, depending on the use case. Now, let me go back to the uh, two new methods, vote, extend vote and verify vote extension. So extend vote is going to be called um, by uh, Comet, so by the, the consensus engine. At the moment, uh, we are about to send a pre-vote, a non-nil pre-vote message. So towards the end of the height in which we are trying to you know, try to decide. Uh, this is just for us, this is just a blob of bytes that the application um, adds to the to the vote. And we attach it to the vote message, to the pre-commit message. 
uh, Comet will be signing both the vote as it is doing today and individually the uh, bytes that are um, offered by the application that are replied to by the application in, in the response call of the uh, extend vote method. Um, so this, this message then travels the same way it used to travel according to the Tendermint algorithm. And whenever uh, another, uh, another full node um, uh, receives this message, it will now call the new API called verify vote extension, the new method called verify vote extension, just to make sure that the contents of the vote extension, which is application dependent and is totally opaque to, to comment, is uh, valid. So if the application rejects the contents, and this is important, it's all done in the specification, if you want further data, but basically in, in, two, in, in a few words, if the extension is invalid, both the vote and the extensions are discarded. There are reasons for doing that, and the reasons are mainly the various use cases that uh, you folks want to build on top. And so last year in discussions we had, it was it became clear that this is basically the model we, we need at the application level. So that's it. So if the very favorite extension rejects the vote, sorry, rejects the extension, both the vote and the extensions are dropped. And so you, you will need to gather another vote, another per commit vote from another uh, node, another validator, in order to be able to decide on that height. So that's like how the vote extensions are created and disseminated. Then when a node, uh, in particular, a validator decides, it will keep the votes from the previous height somewhere locally, because as you know, those votes, those pre-commit votes, form the commit or the last commit field in the in the next heights block. So this is something that has to be pro like part of the proposal. So it's going to be canon canonicalized in the next height because everybody has their own view of you know the two thirds of the votes that allow them to decide. Um, and then basically at the moment the next height is starting. As for O34, nothing happens. As of O34, nothing happens. As of O37, meaning ABCA10, prepare proposal is called. And as of O38, prepare proposal is called, and uh, is called, and one of the fields in that call, in that prepare pro request prepare proposal is gonna be the vote extension information. Uh, then these, these vote extensions can be used by the application to implement the various use cases that um, that well, you guys have in mind. Um, there was, um, so I don't know if Bez uh, managed to, to rejoin the call. So we had a discussion earlier in the week uh, in order to clarify uh, how uh, a process proposal time, how a node would be sure that the uh, proposer, so the, the one that received the information on the vote extensions at prepare proposal time and basically use that information to propose the block, how uh, another node that would be running process proposal on that proposed block would be sure whether the, the work that the proposer did is good or not. So like in the case of a Byzantine proposer, how, how can we actually accept or reject the block in that case? So there were some discussions there. The final conclusion is that um, we could offer something, we have something in the, in the works in, in terms of extending it, so extending the prepare proposal so that this, the comet signatures are visible to the application. So they, if they we show, they could actually transmit it in, in, in the form of transactions, they could transmit the, the signatures of the original validators so that then at process proposal, you can actually ensure that the prepare, the proposer did not number with the initial values. This was always with this um, Oracle's uh, applic uh, use case in mind. Maybe if, if Bez joins, you can actually add also some more comments on, on this particular use case. I think that's the use case you guys are working on. So, but that basically that's it. So uh, somehow if you need, if the proposer needs to prove they do a good job at uh, managing the vote extensions at prepare proposal time, uh, they will have to um, have their own signature, but I believe the SDK does. So their own signature uh, scheme, their, uh, on their own signature system that would uh, be included in the actual raw bytes of the board extension. I don't know if I did a good job at explaining it. It's it's a it's a complex matter, and uh, this was an impl an, an improvised explanation, so probably not the best one. I invite you to basically go to the specification that is in the Comet BFT repo. Uh, it's not it's not in main yet, but I can actually if somebody wants that you can actually ping me and I will give you the, the link 
where you can actually already find the specifics of our extensions and how they behave and what they are supposed to do and they were not supposed to do. I have left out from this explanation, I have left out all the uh, things you have to be careful about when you are using it from the application perspective. In particular, it is not uh, obvious to understand when to, when you can reject a VOD extension. It is, you cannot just reject the VOD extensions because you don't, you don't like the contents of it. There are strict rules, right? That you have to respect when you, re, when you reject a VOD extension to make sure that you don't hold the chain. It's, it's they are similar rules for those, for those who are uh, familiar. It is the similar, it, it, they are similar rules to the ones we have for uh, at process proposal time in 037 in order to reject, again, there are strict rules there and these like similar strict rules uh, apply for rejecting for extensions. Thank you, thank you so much. And so, sorry for putting you on the spot. Um, does no anyone have any, does, does anyone have any questions? Um, I can't remember clearly if I like touched on in a previous call about like some use cases. Like one of the use cases I'm most excited for um, is more streamlined upgrades. So like right now, what we have is you make a governance proposal um, with a stop height, with a halt height basically. And in that, and then everyone needs to be around their computer around that halt height. And then everyone, the chain halts, and then you do an upgrade, you swap your binary or Cosmo advisor does it automatically, and then the chain goes. Um, so it's nice that there is like a predictable time but the, the really cool thing about vote extension is like, let's say someone does a, a proposal that they want to upgrade to X and the halt height is, let's say a couple thousand blocks in the future, um, but they opt in to a feature that says like, if two thirds plus of the validator set has updated, then um, signal that and wait two days and then conduct the upgrade. And so what this enables is like, instead of waiting for like, two weeks, let's say, to do the upgrade at the halt height, you can actually do it a lot sooner with a more coordinated, because you the chain is aware who's on the latest version. This also helps in like the security practices. So like some of the, some of you guys in the, in November, October, I can't remember when it was, it was fun keeping track of who's at one third, who's at two thirds um, and that whole fiasco. But, and it was like basically telegram chats, Excel sheets, and with a feature like this with vote extensions, basically we can modify the the node to basically say um okay once you've updated to the version with the patched security bug then send a signaling uh message as your vote extension to say like hey i've i've updated um and so that's kind of like a better signaling proposal than a, a telegram chat um so there's like a lot more streamlined things that you can do there because then you can also track who hasn't upgraded and you can follow up with those people in particular um, so there's a there's a lot of cool features. This is on this is on top of like the already like many times discussed like uh, threshold encrypted transactions um, use case of vote extensions. Yeah, that's definitely exciting. That's uh, yeah. Thanks for coming up with this use case. As I said, like you guys know way better than us. Uh, you know the details of the use case. How you you guys are going to use this? Uh, however, one of the things that you know this uh, use case that you raised actually re reminded me. That is something I left out in my initial explanation, and maybe it's worth because it's kind of similar, which is um, what we're doing is we have a way, we have a solution, let's call it like this. We have a solution for chains that will be using O37, and they need to switch to O38 uh, by upgrading. And so going from no word extensions to word extensions, the upgrade is not obvious, even if you do it in a coordinated manner because uh, prepared proposal needs those word extensions the first time it's, so basically if you w go down with a 037 binary and then you come back up without an 038 binary, the 038 binary is gonna be expecting the uh, word extensions from the previous height there. So that's not, a, not an, uh, like it's, 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 um, you know, it's a valid problem. And the way we have um, like the solution we, we designed is that we are introducing a new consensus parameter that in initially it's set to zero, meaning disabled. And then the application will have to, whenever, you know, the application will have provisions for upgrading. And at a given point, the application will have to say, now this consensus parameter is, an, it's actually an, an integer. So I, I think it's an int64 anyway, the same type as the height. And so it will have to be set to a future height. And then basically uh, at comet level, we will coordinate. So at that height, we will start with our extensions. Prepare proposal will be as before, no extensions. But then at the, um, at the moment of pre-committing at that point, 
they are required to act at extensions. And if, they, if they, there is one of the nodes that is not any extensions, those votes will already be rejected. And then the next height will be already as though, uh, you know, it had already like fully with extensions or normal, like, and from there on, like, uh, we're, we're okay. This was a problem we, 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 we had to solve because we know that it will be, you know, many chains will be facing. This is not a problem for a new chain, that a chain that hard forks or, or starts from Genesis, but it will definitely be a problem for chains that are already there, are already online and want, just want to upgrade. Amazing. That's definitely a good, a good point. The, we'll definitely have to work close. Um, and I think I, I want to say like the initial use case that many chains will use um, and the immediate one is actually um, removing like the need for Oracle transactions and, and, and instead just put it into the um, vote extension. And so I think that one, there's already some teams like UMI, um, potentially DODX and potentially some other chains that would like immediately start working closer with them. So they are aware of this is good and something we can coordinate on. Um, does anyone have any questions on vote extensions? Awesome. Then we're at the top of the hour. Everyone have a good weekend. If you're if you're in New York City, then definitely DM me. I'm here till Sunday and let's hang out. Ciao, ciao guys. Cool. Bye now. See you. Thanks, Mark. Bye. Bye-bye.